good evening dear viewers i am dr vikram arunachalam i am a consultant psychiatrist with manipal for the last 8 years overall i am uh, uh, in psychiatry in the field of psychiatry for the last 15 years so it's a great pleasure to be here today and uh, discuss about an important public health concern so which is uh, depression and suicide so we do have a question and answer session so you can raise up your uh, come up with your uh, questions in the comment box and uh, i will try to answer that so this will be an half an hour uh, uh, facebook live so even otherwise i am available uh, even after this session so you can raise up the questions which will be taken up so today i have come up with few questions uh, which some of my patients had uh, asked me during my consultation time so in fact we'll try to answer this so i'm not going into the technical depth of depression and suicide we will uh, try to understand depression in terms of public health view so let us look at the current uh, scenario of depression globally in india as well as uh, uh, globally and as well as in india so globally uh, the uh, study says that nearly roughly 300 million people are depressed so that's a huge number so it's uh, almost uh, 5% of the population in world are depressed so when we look at top 5 countries which are depressed india comes at second it's unfortunate so the uh, china uh, world takes us in the most depressed uh, number uh, prevalence of depression uh, followed by india then us then it's brazil and uh, bangladesh so since the start of this covid 19 pandemic there has been an enormous uh, amount of stress especially this um, uh, unprecedented lockdown has led to stress and depression so a recent study in india had also showed that there is a 43% of indians were depressed so this is a this is a study as per the national mental health survey and uh, predominantly women were more depressed than men so to the, the ratio was 2 is to 1 so depression is a global health problem uh, the disability worldwide and a major contributor for uh, disability associated life years so and also the commonest cause for suicide in uh, suicide is following the depressive episode so many tend to ask when i talk about depression when i uh, when i when i do mention about the signs and symptoms of depression everyone would say that i would have gone through the same phase so am i depressed so there is a there is a difference between uh, what is depression and uh, sadness so is it the same so let's see so an healthy person goes through variety the variety of mood states including including transient feelings of sadness so this uh, sadness is a temporary phase and it is uh, it is not uh, very much disabling the person there is no impairment in the it is not incapacitating and it is non pervasive and it's uh, it's okay to feel sad at times but it is not long lasting when us whereas when we talk about uh, clinical depression it's more of a pervasive sustained and more intensive uh, problem so when when we say depression it has to be throughout the day it has to be on uh, most of the time for several days in a week uh, uh, ideally we would say continued uh, symptoms for two weeks of time so it might be accompanied by a sense of uh, guilt feeling helpless uh, wanting to hurt self a lot of uh, uh, thoughts about self harm there might be other biological disturbances like appetite sleep disturbances and it might significantly uh, impair the person's functioning out functioning levels also so uh, to clinically diagnose as uh, depression there are three core symptoms when when i say core symptoms these has to be there mandatorily to make a diagnosis of depression pathognomonic of this condition so when we say uh, the core symptoms it is low mood feeling that is feeling feeling of uh, sadness um, fatigability that is feeling excessively tired and at times uh, feeling um, uh, a lack of interest what we technically say as anhedonia not feeling pleasure for previously pleasurable activities for example the person was interested in interacting with friends going out with friends all of a sudden that uh, behavior has changed now so these are the core symptoms so not everyone presents with these core symptoms many a times what happens is uh, in our clinical practice we are taught about uh, as a medical student as a Uh, post graduate in psychiatry i would have learned about this core symptoms but over the years when i see patients not everyone presents with these kind of core symptoms most of the time people tend to have what what we call as mask depression so mask depression is something like they tend to present with uh, fatigue 
chronic pain symptoms many would say when many would approach doctors with uh, symptoms of uh, chronic headache chronic low back pain migraine headache in spite of repeated doctor visits the doctor would uh, not find any organic uh, etiology uh, almost all the investigations would be normal so these person would uh, have an underlying depression but they don't uh, tend to present it in the classical way but they tend to uh, present it in a more medical way so some people present with sleep disturbances some people present with sexual disturbances sexual dysfunction uh, some uh, present with a lot of interpersonal relationship problem uh, they tend to go for repeated medical visits and uh, many people tend to report with uh, reckless behaviors especially in child child and adolescent depression so uh, the other question arises now uh, most of them uh, do ask me do do even uh, i have uh, heard many of the talks uh, in which some lay people would say that depression is a sign of mental illness and they say that depression always occurs following a stressful event or a traumatic life events which is not always true so when i say depression depression is a real problem it is not an attitude it is not a weakness it is not a character problem it is not a belief it is not something by choice depression is a medical problem it is a it is just like another medical condition like people tend to have hypertension people tend to have diabetes people tend to have uh, thyroid issues so similarly depression is a medical problem so what happens when i say it is a medical problem for example when a person with a liver condition with an underlying liver pathology tends to develop jaundice so similarly depression occurs when there is a malfunction of an organ in this case that organ is a brain so when the brain doesn't function well so people tend to be depressed so there is no way that the person can come out of depression on his own or the person can think positively when the brain is affected so just like other condition of liver or any other organ which needs treatment even this condition needs a treatment so when we when we say that depression is does not occur only depression the stressful events precipitate or trigger the depressive events so they are not only that they are the it doesn't mean that they are the root cause for depression so depression when we say about the reason the etiology the causes for depression uh, we would uh, say that there are three cluster of factors which uh, results in depression so it is not one factor it is a uh, intermixed of all these three cluster group of uh, factors which results in depression so it is uh, we call it as biopsychosocial model Uh, biological factors psychological factors social and environmental factors so let's see what are these factors that results in depression when i say biological factors it is there are lot of neurochemicals in the brain neurotransmitters when there are neurotransmitter abnormalities in the brain when the neurotransmitter levels are altered people can tend to have depression in some neurological conditions like multiple sclerosis people tend to have depression in some endocrinological abnormalities like thyroid condition low thyroid levels hypothyroidism people tend to have depression and in some cases say 15 to 20 percent people with a genetic uh, uh, with a heredity history of uh, depression they tend to have depression so sometimes it runs in the family so with genetic preloading people tend to have depression so when i said this is about uh, the biological factors when i say psychological factors so the personality of the person uh, the coping uh, patterns the temperament of the person and some early developmental factors like childhood trauma childhood abuse can result in depression so social and environment factors are always overrated when compared to the psychological and the biological factors so definitely they do contribute lot of stresses like uh, losses exit event we call as exit events like death of a beloved ones unemployment poverty poor social support all this can result in uh, depression so it is an intermixture of all these factors so not one factor we cannot pinpoint that this is the reason for depression so when we talk about depression it is not a single thing i mean uh, there are different types of depression so there is an what we call as unipolar it is a major depressive de- disorder people person doesn't have any other symptoms except for signs of depression sometimes it can ha- happen in bipolar affective disorder mania the by person with bipolar affective disorder can have a mania as well as depression it is called as bipolar depression and sometimes it can have a seasonal affective in certain seasons people tend to become more depressed than other season we call it a seasonal affective disorder 
then there is something called as dysthymia dysthymia is persistent depressive symptoms it is a low grade very mild symptoms lasting continuously for more than 2 years or so so it is called as dysthymia and there is a condition which happens uh, following a psychotic disorder psychotic uh, condition is a different condition which is which is uh, more of a thought disorder uh, thought process disorder so people tend to have psychotic depression and some uh, um, the most common these days what we are seeing is uh, it happens in uh, peripartum that is mostly which happens during the pregnancy time which is called as postpartum depression okay so these are different type of depression each different each uh, type of depression needs a individualistic approach in uh, when it comes to management okay so generally uh, so we know what is depression most of them identify depression we can identify depression in our colleagues we can identify depression in our friends and uh, the family members but why do why people are uh, generally reluctant to seek help not just depression i have seen even in most mental other mental health condition people don't voluntarily seek help they are very reluctant to seek help so why is this uh, discrepancy when when we compare when we compare this to physical condition so when there is a physical illness i have hurt my finger there is an headache um, uh, i have a fever so i voluntarily go and approach the uh, uh, physician or any other general practitioner and uh, talk about my illness so but when it comes to depression there is and other mental health condition still there is a lot of social stigma there is people don't want to come up in open they don't they are not uh, uh, happy to discuss about their uh, depression or any other mental health condition because there is a fear that uh, the person might be branded as mentally ill the person might be having a fear that when i am mentally ill nobody would marry my uh, daughter or nobody would talk to my family members they would try to isolate us so all these kind of uh, uh, perceived stigma is there and also there is lot of misconceptions about mental health issues and mental health uh, treatment so when it comes to treatment people would have a lot of misbelief that uh, notions about uh, psychiatric illness and the medication they say they feel they would feel that treatment is lifelong uh, i would be put on sleeping pills sleeping pills many or many times i develop uh, side effects with the medication which is which is not true maybe these were true uh, two decades back so uh, almost in the last two decades there has been leaps and bounds of uh, advances in psychiatry so we do not give sleeping pills unless until it is exclusive sleep disorder so there are specific medication for specific disorders including depression and also there has been uh, leaps and bounds progress in uh, the research so uh, they have uh, the scientists have found out which low which hormone which neurotransmitter medications uh, so particular medications are given so the most important aspect in psychiatry is early identification and treatment of the condition the more it is prolonged the more the treatment gap is more and uh, the treatment is also much prolonged so we need to identify the condition early to identify the condition early we need to come out of this stigma and uh, notions about psychiatric illness and uh, we need to discuss about uh, these things we need to come up in the open forum so of late there are there are there has been instances where in where many bollywood actresses like uh, deepika padukone who is a brand ambassador for indian psychiatric society has acknowledged about her problem acknowledged that she had depression and suicidal ideas she came up in open she started her own foundation uh, live love laugh foundation which is uh, catering to many adolescent and uh, other uh, people with the depressive disorders okay so let's see so we have understood what are what are the clinical features of depression what are the reasons that cause depression we have seen the different types of depression we understood why people are reluctant in seeking depression so now uh, we will try to understand what will be the impact of depression on any person so depression is not a single entity so when the person is depressed it can affect the family in the longer and it can affect the society in the longer and it can affect the entire country as well okay so it impairs functioning it impairs physical health and it lowers the quality of life when we say physical health so depression and physical illness run hand in hand so most physical illness has an underlying stress the stress hypothesis so many people with depression uh, tend to have uh, uh, or uh, have a comorbid cancer hypertension diabetes mellitus thyroid condition dementia multiple sclerosis and many other uh, neuropsychiatric condition as well so there has been a um, uh, lot of studies in uh, international studies as well as studies in india which says that there is a, a risk of diabetes is 
two folds increase in people with depression and similarly when person with uh, the person with uh, diabetes uh, sorry and vice versa person with depression have a two fold risk of having diabetes and person with diabetes have a two fold risk of having uh, depression as well okay so and uh, for example also even the cardiovascular conditions when per when two person had an heart attack myocardial infarction so imagine one person died so the psychological autopsy and researches on this person has shown that that particular person pre morbidly before he developed the cardiovascular condition had a depressive disorder so the the depression and depressive disorder just like other medi medical condition has lot of mortality and morbidity it increases the rate of other medical condition as well as increases the death rate okay so risk of diabetes risk of uh, cardiovascular condition everything is increased and in the longer run it can affect the it can lower the quality of life so many uh, people with uh, uh, depression do tend to feel suicidal but is it true that all suicides are because of mental health issue or depression this is not true so suicidal behavior indicates deep sense of unhappiness but not necessarily mental disorder people with mental disorder or not all mental disorders do feel suicidal and vice versa so it's true that most suicide happens suddenly without warning which is not true so most of the majority of suicides have been preceded by warning signs the warning signs might be verbal and behavioral as well so of of, uh, of course there are some suicides which can happen very impulsively but most of the time what uh, we do, what we uh, when we do a psychological autopsy on a person with suicide so we would have find that the person would have directly or indirectly indicated about his suicidal uh, wishes so death wishes to a relative to a close friend or uh, to a family member or maybe to the general practitioner so uh, we should be as a general public as a medical fraternity as other specialists even uh, the layman has to understand some of the risk factors or high risk factors in suicide especially in a country like india so why we are emphasizing more about uh, suicide is uh, in india the suicide due to depression has tripled in india almost after this uh, pandemic and uh, uh, the most scarier thing is people are talking about a pandemic of depression and other mental health issues which can be much more severe than the covid pandemic so it is important to understand what are the warning signs and look out for this in people when people come and talk to you don't underestimate their suicidal thought don't underestimate don't uh, uh, advise them before listening to them empathetically so suicide as i told you it's very common among the age group of 15 to 29 it can across uh, it can happen across all the age group but most common in india is between the age group of 15 to 29 the risk is very high and uh, india unfortunately india is uh, known to be infamously uh, called as a suicide capital in asia and uh, it's going to be uh, going beyond asia also and uh, i'm right now in bangalore bangalore is also called uh, the currently as well surpass chennai and uh, other cities to be known as the suicide capital of india so it's our uh, duty to know about the warning signs just like in hypertension or diabetes when people try to educate that for example the covid uh, situation pandemic people tend to explain the medical fraternity explain when you are having cough when you are having fever when you are having body pain loss of smell loss of taste these are symptoms of covid so similarly there are some symptoms where you can identify that the person has a high risk for suicide so nobody commits suicide just out of the blue so most of them have a direct or an we express a direct or an indirect cue so which we when we uh, uh, tend to learn this uh, warning signs we can easily help them and prevent this suicide in most of the cases so this suicide can happen in any of our family members can happen to our colleagues or any other person so be aware of the warning signs understand and help the suicidal person so there is a uh, there is no there's nothing called as a typical suicide victim we cannot say that this person he or she will commit suicide it can happen to young it can happen to old person it can happen to rich it can happen to poor fortunately these warning signs are there which when acted upon can save lives so let's see what are the warning signs a person might be suicidal if he talks about committing suicide repeatedly he has trouble in biological symptoms repeatedly sleep disturbances continuously 
continuously having uh, uh, eating disturbances there is a drastic changes in the behavior the uh, behavior suddenly the person becomes withdrawn doesn't interact with family members doesn't interact with uh, friends or relatives and uh, all of a sudden experiences uh, high uh, very feeling energetic feeling very uh, high all these are also sudden changes in behavior or risk factors for suicide he withdraws from friends and social activities uh there is loss of interest in his uh, usual hobbies loss of interest in work loss of interest in uh, school especially in uh, children's we would see and uh, uh, many a time people uh, tend to prepare for the death by making a will or uh, even final arrangement they would say that they would give their personal belongings the person in normal times would not even share anything but during this kind of a uh, suicidal uh, tendency people tend to share their uh, prized possession and uh, when a person has attempted suicide in the past the risk factor is high so he takes unnecessary risk he has a, had a recent severe losses in finance all these are risk factors is preoccupied about death and dying always explores on on the internet or google checks uh, what are the ways to die smooth to die without uh, pain or something like that talks to people talks to friends about death watches more of death news so all these are risk factors and uh, the person tends to be withdrawn from everyone uh, it tends to lose interest in self care and uh, there is an increase of, uh, of person might be using an alcohol or drug or in tobacco all of a sudden there is an increase in use of alcohol and uh, smoking all these are risk factors and warning signs for suicide so when we uh, understand about these warning signs we can easily help a people to um, um, uh, seek help and prevent the suicidal tendency so uh, we have understood about warning signs and suicide doesn't happen out of the blue so people would have directly or indirectly given a clue about their suicidal uh, tendency and uh, now how to reduce this risk we have talked about all the uh, warning signs so there is a, there are lot of uh, uh, measures to prevent the suicide as well so there are lot of protective factors just like this risk factor there uh, just like the negatives there are some positives also protective factors to prevent suicide so the foremost is the belief that it is okay to say, seek some help and early identification and early intervention is a is a best method and uh, good problem solving skills in the person good coping skills in the person an optimistic outlook feeling always optimistic having a positive attitude and uh, ready and uh, ready and eager to seek help from others so when i mean see, eager to seek help it need not be a psychiatrist or any other mental health professional or even the medical fraternity he can uh, seek help uh, from uh, near and dear ones friends and relatives talk about their problem come up in open discuss about their problem see most of the time what happens is when we talk about the problem itself we feel that when we are heard of, heard by the other person most of our problem get addressed so at least initially we feel we feel reassured and we not go for this extreme uh, extreme step so we need to try to encourage a person to talk about his problems and obviously a positive family and good social support and uh, studies have even shown that a good spiritual support is a protective factor against uh, suicide and other depressive conditions okay so these are the uh, protective factors which can prevent against uh, suicide so also there are uh, we uh, i would like to emphasize on the uh, uh, health helpline in our country uh, we have a health helpline 104 so 104 also caters as a suicide helpline so it's a 24 bar 7 into 365 so it can be for person feeling restless uh, having this kind of uh, thoughts about feeling helpless so when i say helpless uh, they tend to have a triad of symptoms uh, the people tend to feel helpless about the situation feels hopeless about future feeling worthless and uh, feeling burden on others family members or uh, relatives or friends so when he expresses these kind of a thoughts when he feels that uh, he, there is no one to discuss he can immediately dial toll free number 104 and talk about his conditions okay so so we have uh, see uh, seen what are the uh, risk factors and uh, what are the protective factors for suicide so so finally uh, we'll discuss on how depression and other mental health conditions are treated so when it comes to treatment of mental health conditions or depression so there is nothing as a tailor made treatment tailor made treatment approach uh, there is nothing as a common pill one pill works for everyone 
So it's an individualistic approach. So each it has to be holistic. Holistic means it is the multiple things are involved in addressing a depression or any other mental health condition. So the most common is medications and talk therapy. When I say medications, medication target the altered biology. Medicines for depression are as important as giving a talk therapy. Talk therapy alt, uh, targets the altered psychology. So when I say medications, there are a varied medications. So like uh, earlier the medications were like uh, two decades back we didn't have much of medications. So a lot of um, sleeping pills were given. So which was which was incapacitating the person. The person was unable to work feeling sleepy, drowsy, but these days we have specific medication given for a short period of time. Once the symptoms tend to remit, we can gradually taper and stop the medication also. And in severe depression, we have a uh, most effective means of treatment called as electroconvulsive therapy. So it is a very safe medica safe uh, treatment even in pregnancy and even in uh, ch childhood children's uh, this uh, treat, uh, electroconvulsive treatment has been effectively given without any kind of a complications. So as I said, it's an holistic approach. Medication should be the mainstay. Along with medication simultaneously, we would do this talk therapy. Therapy is uh, more structured. So we have a lot of therapy, supportive psychotherapy, interpersonal therapy. What we uh, commonly use in uh, depression is what we call as CBT, Cognitive Behavior Therapy. So Cognitive Behavior Therapy addresses uh, the thoughts, emotions and actions of the person. So uh, this, this is a structured therapy done by a psychologist. So it has to be done in uh, uh, on an average six to eight sessions. Again, depends on the individual's uh, problems. So along with that, there is, a, there, there is an emphasis on family therapy also. So when a person is depressed and when a person is suicidal, it doesn't affect the individual alone. alone it can have an impact on the other family member, especially more commonly the spouse. There is a caregiver burnt out in uh, most of the mental health condition. So family approach also, family scoping skills has to be enhanced. Family, uh, uh, the relaxed family person, the uh, spouse has to be taught relaxation procedures. So in the longer run, so the family issues is also addressed. The person's outcome recovery also will be much better when the spouse is more understanding and accepting the person's medical the psychiatric condition okay so uh, so uh, we have understood what is uh, how uh, the depression is treated so medication would be the mainstay when we initiate the medication early it can be tapered and stopped early also so just like uh, um, we understood the, about the protective factors in suicide there um, we, there are some uh, ways we can prevent uh, depression and also some mental health other mental health conditions like the anxiety spectrum disorders. So we need to eff effectively enhance our coping skill strategies. The uh, most commonly advocated, just like in physical condition, the most commonly advocated in uh, most of the psychiatric conditions are exercises, having a regular exercise regime, ch bringing about a lifestyle changes, uh, getting adequate sleep. We do talk about a good sleep hygiene. Sleep is very, very essential, just like as we eat, eat our food, sleep is very essential and diet also we need to keep a watch some of the diet can alter our physiological bring about physiological changes can increase our stress hormone levels and may predispose us to depression so this is about depression this is about uh, suicide how we can uh, identify depression how we can identify suicide how we can uh, treat depression and how we can prevent depression so i've just given an overview about this in detail, if you want, uh, we can share the uh, materials also available through our platform. So let's see, we can take up some of the questions from the comment section. So there is a question uh, uh, on how does antidepressant help cope up with depression. So as I told you, it is a depression, a uh, lot of biological uh, changes does happen when a person is depressed. So the neurotransmitter levels gets uh, deranged. So when I say depression, there is a hormone called a serotonin, which is an happiness hormone. Serotonin, dopamine gets deranged. So most of the time we tend to give seret SSRI, serotonin, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which, are, which regulates the serotonin levels in the brain and it helps a person with depression. So most of the melancholic biological depressions can be addressed with antidepressants. There's a question on how to deal with people who have multiple personality disorders. 
because it's difficult to deal with people having multiple personality disorders and this could lead to depression maybe uh, they i think the depression in caregiver and mental challenges for people around them so we need to evaluate so personality issues is a different uh, component so personality problems has to be evaluated in depth we need a psychologist uh, uh, a psychological evaluation for a personality uh, issues and uh, the person has to be addressed uh, based on the kind of personality we have three cluster of personality cluster a cluster b and cluster c which has a different uh, behavioral uh, manifestation so definitely it can be addressed that's a different topic so it can be uh, discussed later so message from uh, sundar thank you for uh, sharing knowledge of pre prevention of depression and symptom thanks sundar so i hope it was informative so we are ready to take up any other questions so can depression be masked without the core syndrome yes obviously so i did mention that many especially in indian scenario people don't openly come up in western world we have see we see that people are open and uh, uh, happy to talk about their mental health issue especially depression they do come and say i'm feeling sad i'm feeling uh, i'm uh, unable to cope up with work i feel like crying i'm feel i'm feeling suicidal but the um, depression and mental health it's still a taboo subject in india so people don't tend to openly express about depression so it tends to be uh, uh, tend to be uh, uh, sub, uh, submerged inside and people tend to express their uh, psychological problems in in terms of uh, somatic symptoms that is bodily symptoms so what we commonly see as psychiatrists is uh, people tend to come with chronic pains chronic low back pain chronic headache uh, sexual disturbances interpersonal disturbances behavioral disturbances so all these things are uh, symptoms of mass depression so as a mental health professional when we sit and evaluate about uh, signs other uh, symptoms signs and symptoms of depression we can uh, diagnose depression I don't think I don't see any other questions. If there are no more questions, I think we can uh, end the session. Right. So thank you all. Thank you. Uh, so if there are uh, any other uh, doubts, we can you can write on this um, email ID. We would be sharing, so we can uh, clarify your doubts. Mm -hmm. Thank you then.